Hi, I'm Thalia, and this is the Anthro Edit. Over the last few years, I've had the opportunity of volunteering at our local Museum of Natural History in the Anthropology Department. While there, I've learned a lot about what it means to curate, and the experiences that I've had have inspired me to look at my life as a curation process. To curate something is more than preserving, organizing, and cataloging. It is truly a labor of love. Curating a wardrobe of beautiful pieces is also a labor of love. And as that is what we have been focusing here at the Anthro Edit during the month of February, I thought I would share a little bit about what I've learned. Curating your wardrobe is more than just shopping for clothing or wearing clothing. It's really about getting to know yourself and how you choose to present yourself to others. As I've worked on curating my own wardrobe this month, I've learned so much about myself, but I've also gained a huge appreciation for those on social media who have spent hours and hours curating their wardrobes and then sharing it with all of us. Finding the right pieces that really represent who you are is not an easy task, but it is certainly a rewarding one. Today I'd like to share a little bit about how to curate your wardrobe. I've broken down the things that I've learned into 10 steps but depending on your personality or how you choose to tackle your closet, there could be more steps or less. I don't consider myself an expert. I still have a long way to go to curate pieces that I really love and to really understand the process and to make it work for me. But I would love to share what I do know and what I've learned along the way. The first step in curating a wardrobe that you love is to really get to know your style. You don't have to have a complete understanding of what your style is or how you'd like to present yourself to the world before starting to curate your wardrobe. In fact, I found for myself that as I have moved forward, I've really gained a deeper sense of what colors I like to wear, what shapes, what lines, and I've really gotten even more clear about what my style is. So don't feel like you have to know everything in advance. It's okay to get started where you're at, but it's really important to get to know what shapes, patterns, colors, design lines, and so forth really enhance your type of beauty. What are some favorite pieces you have in your wardrobe already? Why do you like them? What do they say about who you are? If you don't like any of the pieces in your current wardrobe, use Pinterest and Instagram to find inspiration. Use social media as a resource to help you to understand what aesthetic you love. Although you don't really develop your style while you're looking at images, getting ideas and inspiration can really help you to narrow down your style options. If you do have pieces in your current wardrobe that you love, what can you learn from them? Do you like how they fit? Do you like the texture, the color, the shapes, the feel of the fabric? How that fabric fits around your body? What is it that makes those items your favorite? Another option to really get clear about your style is to get a body analysis or a custom color palette. Sometimes having an outside perspective on what looks nice on you can really help you to see your aesthetic from a different point of view. I recently got a body and color analysis to help me to go through this process of curating my wardrobe in February and understanding especially the colors really has given me a leg up from where I was before. It may not help you to determine all of your style preferences, but it really did help me a lot to weed out a ton of options and then narrow in on the ones that really worked for me. One of the things that my stylist suggested was to write out a few words that I felt like really represented my style, and that was really helpful. I knew that I loved timeless classic pieces with kind of a relaxed fit, and I also knew that I really loved French fashion and French style, but writing it down and seeing those words on paper really helped me to start the process of developing a style that really worked for me. How would you describe the style that you would like to curate in your wardrobe? 
Finding your style is not something that's going to happen overnight. You're really going to start to develop that through the curation process, but it's great to start with some kind of baseline. The simplest way to determine your style is to think about what you'd really like to have in your closet and just start there. Before you start buying new items, it's really important to understand what it is that you already have. Is your closet overflowing with items that you never wear, don't really like, things that don't fit? Maybe they are items that you've had for years, things that you wore when you were younger, but they just aren't quite right now. But you're ready to get rid of it and make room for the things that you really want. Wherever you are currently at right now, I suggest doing a closet inventory. This was enormously helpful for me as I hadn't ever really gone through a curation process when it came to my wardrobe. In the past, I would just buy clothes that I thought I needed and add them to the list of items in my closet that I didn't really like, that I rarely ever wore. <laughs> Doing a closet inventory gave me a sense of what I had, what I needed to get rid of, and what it was that I really wanted to add so that I wasn't continually buying unnecessarily and regretting those purchases later. If you are interested in doing a closet inventory, I have created a downloadable, easy to use workbook to help you go through all of the different items in your closet and then to assess and see what works, what doesn't work, and what your next step might be. And if you're interested in doing that, I'll go ahead and leave the link in the description below. Regardless of whether or not you use the PDF that I've created, it's really important to know what's in your closet before you start to add to it. Curating is about having things that enhance your life, that you love. If you have a closet that is packed full of items that you really don't have any connection to and are not wearing, there is no room for anything new to fill that space. So make room for the things that you truly want so that you can find them and add them. The next step is to get rid of everything that is no longer serving you. It's important to know what's in your closet, but it's also important to go through and get rid of any excess that you are not using, that you don't need, that you don't like. When I began curating my wardrobe, I had several clothes boxes packed full of items up in my closet. Some of them were seasonal items that I would swap out every few months or so, but overall I had a lot of clothes in my closet from the past that I just really didn't wear, that I really maybe wanted to be able to wear, but I had gained some weight and just didn't fit in. I also had a lot of purchases that were like guilt-ridden purchases <laughs> where I had spent money on items and then either wasn't able to return them or thought I might use them and just never did. So I had this excess and although it was organized very neatly in my closet, I knew it was there and there really wasn't any room for the new items that I wanted to add to my wardrobe, especially after doing the body analysis and the custom color analysis. I wanted items that I knew were gonna look good on me, and yet here I was kind of sentimentally and maybe in a little way kind of hoarding <laughs> these items, afraid that I wasn't going to find what I really wanted. So I did a huge clear out and that was such a help. I piled four garbage bags full of clothing and jewelry and shoes and nail polish <laughs> that I was able to donate to Goodwill for somebody else who will love and appreciate those items. Go through your closet before you start curating, before you start really bringing things in and clear out space. Make room for the beautiful things that you would like to have. I would say that it's a mistake to try to get rid of things as you add things. I know that people suggest doing that. If you buy a shirt, get rid of a shirt. But I have found for myself that that is just 
really more difficult decision when I've purchased something rather than getting rid of it in advance, knowing that I'm going to replace it with something that I like better. So after you get rid of everything, most likely going to find that there's a bit of a deficit in your closet. So at this point, it's really good to sit down and make a list of everything that you would like to put into your closet so that you have a really good idea before you go out shopping, what it is that you want, what it is that you need, and what it is that you really wish for. What do you wear most? What season is it currently? What colors would you like more of? How many items do you need? What have you always wanted that you have never allowed yourself to buy? When I looked at my own wardrobe, I realized I didn't need a lot of dressier items. I work from home and occasionally I will go out and do something fancy. So I didn't need a lot of dressy items. Although I did want to add some seasonal dresses that I could wear every day that would be comfortable and beautiful, as well as adding some jeans that fit really well. One of the things I realized when I got the body analysis was that I needed to adjust the fit on my jeans. Not only was a cropped fit better than a long fit, I needed to make sure that all of my clothing was quite tailored and fit my proportions almost exactly. So I also was gonna start looking for blouses and tops that fit my shoulders correctly and that weren't too baggy. I noticed that I had a lot of baggier clothing in my closet. I tend to look a little bit more frumpy in those types of styles. When I was getting rid of things in my closet, I ended up with quite a deficit. And so I needed to make a good solid list about the things that I needed. And I had to replace a ton of my staple clothing because they just really didn't fit my body. When you're young, you can kind of get away with a little bit more in that department. You can wear things that are a little bit frumpier and, and they still look okay. But as I've aged, a lot of those items just don't support my body type. Making a list, even if it's not perfect, before you start to shop is going to make your life so much easier. And you'll avoid buying a bunch of things that you really can't use and will regret buying later. So after you've made a list of the things that you know you need and would like to have in your closet, it's time to make a shopping plan. Even though you have a list of items that you need and want, that doesn't mean that just because you go online or go into a store that you're going to find exactly what it is that you're looking for immediately. So first determine what is it that you're going to shop for, how much are you going to spend, what is it that you really need right now. In my experience, it's best to start with the things that you really need. Start to fill your closet with a few basics that are going to support your wardrobe long term. And then work into the items that you've wanted for a long time but are maybe pricier, are on that wish list that you have. And those items tend to be items that we really have to curate. You have to go out and look for those exact pieces and it may take a while for you to find them. So your plan is really just you deciding where it is that you want to start curating. The next step is to start shopping and adding those pieces that you love to your wardrobe. And this can be easier said than done, for sure. However, there are some things to consider that will improve both your online or in-store shopping experience. The first thing that I suggest is to measure every inch of your body. <laughs> I know that sounds a little bit excessive, but as you start to shop, especially online, you're gonna find that it's so much easier if you know what measurements fit your body perfectly rather than just flying by the seat of your pants and hoping that that small is really a small or that medium isn't more like a large and to really get familiar with what those measurements are and then also checking the stores to be, make sure that those clothes fit properly. I walk around with a tape measure in my purse at all times <laughs> and I also have on my phone all of my measurements saved in one place so that I know exactly what it is that I 
need to check on the garment to make sure it's going to fit perfectly. Online you can't try anything on ahead of time and you have to be really careful about return policies and making sure that the clothing you're buying online is not only good quality but is going to fit your body the first time instead of buying something, sending it back, replacing it, exchanging it, when oftentimes if you're shopping even a little bit higher end, those clothing items don't stick around for long. So definitely do your homework first and measure your body. If you would like some help knowing what to measure, I created a free downloadable worksheet to help you make sure that you get all of the common measurements, but also the measurements that are not so common. So I'll just link that down in the description below in case you're interested in that. The next thing to remember when you're shopping is to make sure that you have that plan in mind, that you're going out and shopping intentionally for specific items. Really make sure that you are comfortable in the item that you're purchasing and when you're curating and you're trying to create a wardrobe full of items you love, don't compromise on a fit that isn't quite right. You'll just regret it later. I have to remind myself all the time that curating is a long-term process. It's easy to get impatient when you have gone through your wardrobe and cleared out a ton and there's not a whole lot to wear, but you want to make sure that even though maybe you're cycling through the same five outfits because you've made all this room for the things that you want, but you're having a hard time finding the things that you want in the colors and in the sizes and in the shapes, just remember that as you find those pieces that you love the most, it's going to feel so good and it will be worth the wait and worth the effort of going out and shopping and searching and doing your due diligence to find the items that you really, really want. Once you have gone through and gotten rid of things and made your lists and you know what it is you want to buy and you start to buy those items, it's really important to care for the clothing that you have in the way that it was meant to be cared for. So definitely read the labels, check the tags, and make sure you're following any instructions for the fabric content and even to preserve color. Typically, I'm pretty good about caring for my clothing, but one day I accidentally washed this beautiful deep red sweater that I had, and I had hardly even worn it. But I put it into the washer with some other clothes, not realizing the fabric content, and when it came out, I didn't dry it, but when it came out of the washer, it was this horrible apple red color. It resembled the previous garment not at all and I was so bummed <laughs> when I saw it because it looked really dingy afterwards and I couldn't even really wear it. So be mindful of those tags and garment cleaning instructions so that you don't make that mistake. Especially as you start to curate a wardrobe of pieces that are higher end and have better quality, you really want to make sure that you aren't wasting your time and your money by treating those garments without care. After you've been shopping for a while and you have accumulated some nice pieces. In time, every wardrobe kind of loses its luster and you need to find ways of enhancing and rejuvenating the items in your closet. The gal who did my body and custom color analysis has a great Instagram account and I love watching what she does and what others have done to experiment and find new and interesting ways of using the items in their wardrobe. So if you're feeling like your closet's looking a little stale and not as exciting, even though you have pieces that you really love and that you've been curating for a long time, find people online who can inspire and help you to create new outfits you can also go into your closet and pull some things out and find new and interesting combinations on your own. And when you find them, just go ahead and take pictures 
and maybe create a folder on your computer or on your phone that shows those cute outfit ideas so that you don't forget them or upload them to a secret board on Pinterest so that you have them when you're out shopping. It's really easy for me because putting together new and interesting outfits is not one of my style gifts to kind of get into a rut with my wardrobe and then I start to feel like oh I think I need to go buy more clothes when in reality I'm just not exactly sure how to use the items that I have and so I feel like it's really fantastic with all of the resources that we have on social media most of the time you don't need to buy new items you just need to find new ways of using the items that you have another step that's similar to the last is to really find continual inspiration. Go out looking for new and interesting ways to utilize the things in your closet. One thing that I learned recently from a gal on YouTube was where and how to buy vintage jewelry that can really enhance your outfits. I loved the jewelry that she had and I thought, oh, a lot of the things that I have in my wardrobe right now really need some kind of interesting detail. And because I tend to be a little bit more of a minimalist when it comes to my style, it's really nice to find people who can turn you on to new ways of wearing jewelry or scarves or other accessories. Maybe you need to invest in a new pair of shoes that could dress up an outfit really quickly. So find continual inspiration to guide your styling choices. And that leads me into the final step, which is to always make adjustments as you go. You're not going to start off with a perfect wardrobe or even a perfect plan for your wardrobe. Yes, we want to be mindful and yes, we want to shop intentionally. And yes, we want to fill our closets with beautiful items that we love, but we are evolving creatures. We don't stay the same and therefore our style doesn't stay the same. Our bodies don't necessarily stay the same. So our preferences shift and change along with our identity. The clothing that I wore when I was young, it suited the chapter of my life that I was in. And then as time went on and things started to shift, my style started to shift. The things that I could comfortably wear on my body started to change. So your style, your wardrobe is always going to be in a state of change. So it's really important to get comfortable with the fact that items are going to flow in and they are going to flow out. Perhaps you'll have some items for 10 years and that's fantastic, but other items may come and go as you find that some things work better or they just aren't really representing you properly anymore. Be open to the process of your own evolution. I hope you enjoyed this video on a few steps to curating a wardrobe that you love. Let me know in the comments below what your curation process looks like and how you go about finding things that you love, shopping intentionally, and really being more mindful in creating your style and in filling your closet. I know that everyone can benefit from the things that you have to share. Again, I'm Thalia and this is the Anthro Edit.